Hi everyone and welcome to this special showdown edition of The Crow Show brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith and yes we are just over an hour away from the opening bounce in what promises to be another fierce contest between two great clubs. Yes of course they'll be out to win the showdown trophy and shortly we'll bring you the story behind this coveted prize. Also today Rory Sloan opens up on what the big grudge game means to him. We've just got to make sure we, we bring that intensity that we have done for the majority of the year. But first, in showdown history, the first clash in 2008 stands out as one of the more brutal encounters. The game was punctuated by spiteful clashes and injuries mounted on both sides. Despite the Crows finishing with no fit players on the bench, they held on for a famous six-point victory. Richard Douglas starred that day, kicking three goals in just his 19th game. He and former Port Ruckman Dean Brogan still have vivid memories of the fierce contest. Luke Jericho was one of four Crows injured in heavy clashes. Gee, that's a big hit by the Jericho hasn't moved. It's on now. It was a massive hit. Uh, obviously, Brogues is a, a big man, and um, I think uh, Jezzy got a, a bit of a hospital ball, and Brogues just uh, didn't hold back and, and ran through him and, and cleaned him up, and I think uh, fractured his sternum at the time. I didn't actually intend to do what I did. It just sort of happened. It actually hurt me a lot, and um, I remember lying on the ground thinking, um, I've got to get up here, otherwise <laughs> I can't show any weakness. But that wasn't the end of the incident. Umpires will have to sort this out. Delbono, our head trainer, come out and um, had his skates on and he, so, I don't know what happened at the time, but he's got caught in the mayhem. I think he was running to the player as I thought Adelaide player was running past. Amid the carnage, Douglas and Bernie Vince stood up. We only had 18 fit blokes at the time and I guess we knew as young blokes we had to stand up. It was our time to really shine and um, you know do our bit for the team and try and uh, get the win. And what a victory it was, crowned by a special moment. There's nothing more better for a Crow supporter than when you win a showdown and for Bungie to have the ball in his hands and turn to the crowd. It was, it was a special moment and um, we certainly got around him and got around each other and certainly enjoyed the win. One of the greatest wins in the Adelaide Crows history. Both Brogan and Douglas agree that showdowns always feel like finals. I remember the game being one of the hardest and most physical games uh, and one of the most enjoyable showdowns that I've probably ever played in. It was a packed house and I, I really thrived off that. So, what about today's game? Both teams are playing some really good footy. Um, it's a massive game for both clubs and uh, no one will be holding back. Bernie Vince won the showdown medal that day despite taking a heavy knock. And the team's reward was the distinctive trophy. So let's find out a little more about one of the most hotly contested prizes in the AFL. It's the closest showdown ever. In total, it probably took about a month to make. I've probably lost a track of the weight of it, uh, to be honest now, but it'd be at least two kilos of, of sterling silver. It's not a plated item, it's the real deal. Probably if you wanted to start and do it now, it would be Probably cost you 20 grand, I'd say. Well, we started uh, the project through West End Brewery. They were the instigators of it. So that's now 21 years ago. And they came up with the concept of uh, Showdown, which is a, I think is a great concept because there's derbies everywhere. You know, in England there's derbies, uh, Sturt and Nord's a derby and so on. But Showdown is a real, a real thing, you know, and uh, no more important than this weekend, of course. Originally they had a generic sort of tr trophy, which is on display uh, at Adelaide Oval now. Then they came to me, we drew it all up in consultation with the marketing guys from the brewery, and away we went. Well, they just wanted something that really stood out, you know, really reeked of showdown. You know, it's more, it's as much about the name, I think, as it is the trophy. I mean, I'm very proud to have made it. You know, it's a, you know, when I'm long gone, it'll hopefully it'll still be kicking around and I'll still be scrapping over it, you know, a couple of times a year. But uh, uh, it really was about the, the name, I think, that, as much as anything. And so, you know, to have the clash of the, of the two footballers and, uh, you know, one, you know, stylised in a, in a Crows uh, Guernsey and the other one uh, Port Adelaide. Um, but that was, you know, that was the, the main part of it, I think. Malcolm Blight has described the showdown as football's greatest rivalry. When Alana returns after the break, a player who has a unique perspective on the big games.
Welcome back. Carl Hardigan has spent time out with a hamstring injury, but he certainly hasn't been sitting back with his feet up. Kyle is the player's representative on the Crows Children's Foundation, and he takes a very active role in helping those in need. So at season's end, when others are taking a relaxing holiday, he'll be trekking in the Himalayas to raise $10,000 for the foundation. So my involvement in the Crows Children's Foundation is that I'm sitting on the board at the moment, so I'm sort of the conduit between the players and uh, the board. Um, so if anyone has any ideas or any charities they want to support um, that they feel really strongly about, they come to me and I relay, relay that to board. So Canteen uh, is working in conjunction with the Crows to deliver a program for young people living with cancer. Kyle's been a great part of the program. He has spent the, each of the first sessions with us, his kindness to the young people, even when we're not in session with him, he makes an effort to come and chat to them and hang out with them. What I love seeing is underprivileged kids or um, kids in need uh, in South Australia being able to get, um, you know, the help they need or um, being able to put a smile on their face because we've um, donated money for a program or something like that. That's that's really the rewarding part for me. And the club has nominated Kyle for the AFL's Jim Steins Community Leadership Award in recognition of his great work. Well, most Crows fans see Charlie Cameron as a quiet achiever, but the Chucky they don't see in the change rooms is actually quite loud, a totally different personality. So which side of Charlie will we see when he sits down with Brody Smith for a 60 second grilling thanks to Revolution Roofing? Welcome to the Victory Veranda Hot Seat. This week we're joined by Charles Cameron. Where were you born? Who was your favourite team growing up and your favourite player? So I was born in Mount Isa. And Where's that? Uh, in the far north Queensland. Um, so I was up there, up in north Queensland. And, um, Is it still up there? Yes, yeah, stopped yeah, actually. Okay. Favourite team was Melbourne Storm. So I was a rugby fan growing up. Your favourite past crow, if you know any? It's a tough one. Probably James Potter's Adley. <laughs> played in the just walked I, in the room. In, I played in the forward line with him, so yeah, he's pretty cool. Your favourite crouch? Yeah, it'd be Brad. And why? This is funny. But that's not. And that's not funny. <laughs> If you were to go on a road trip with boys from the club, who would get invited and who wouldn't get invited? I reckon you, Laird, Rat, probably Tex, Curly, a bit of funny blokes. Who's not getting a gig? I'm too nice. That'd be gutless. I'm too nice. Probably Otto. <laughs> <laughs> would you take Otto? <laughs> yeah, of course. Do you have any pets and do they have Instagram? Yes, I do have a French Bulldog. His name's George, um, named it after Paul George, the favorite basketball player. I don't think he has Instagram, I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have Instagram. <laughs> if you could be anyone else for a day, who would it be and why? Who would it be? I would like to be Julio Jones. All right, thanks for joining us, Charles. Pleasure doing business. Of all the players who've competed in showdowns over the years, very few have the unique perspective on the game that David Brown has. He's represented both the Crows and Port Adelaide, so has seen the intense rivalry and loyalty from both sides. In this segment, Flying the Nest, brought to you by Flight Centre, we discover David's now working for the government in child protection. Born in Port Adelaide, David Brown's football ambition was simply to play for the Magpies. Three early premierships followed. So to be a 17 year old and to, to play for Port and to be part of those um, premiership years, uh, definitely memories that I'll yeah, that lasts forever. The live wire midfielder was chosen by the Crows in their inaugural squad and finished up playing 69 games, with his highlight being the 93 finals campaign. I spent a great six years there and, uh, you know, made lots of friends and um, uh, really enjoyed my time there. Back then, Crows players who weren't selected in the AFL side were released to the Sandful, and that allowed Brown to win another three flags with Port. Whenever I went back to the Magpies, it was like going back home, but uh, really, uh, you know, the ultimate was to, to play with the Crows during those, those six years. Then, when Port joined the AFL, Brown became the only player to be in the inaugural lists of both the Crows and the Power. As you get older, uh, which I am now, 
um, you do look back and you think, well, you know, that uh, was a, a bit of an achievement. Brown admits to supporting both clubs, but when showdowns come round, where are his allegiances? If I was pushed, I'd uh, probably, probably lean uh, towards Port, but um, I guess that's a natural thing of, um, of where I've come from. After retiring, Brown spent 12 years on the wharves, but now works in child protection, which he says is tough, but... Also rewarding to see some uh, young people that have had it tough in their childhood, but go on and uh, become uh, decent uh, citizens in the community. Well, still to come on The Crow Show, Riley Knight, the country boy, shows he knows a bit about off-road driving, and we catch up with the most recent showdown medalist. Showdowns often bring out the best in players, and that can certainly be said of Rory Sloan. Since winning his medal back in round three, the vice captain has had his brilliance tested by regular tags. So we thought it was time to talk to him about showdowns and premiership hopes. To Sloan and Sloan. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he does. He's got his six. And Sloan bangs it through. Like, I've played with tags for a few years now. It's probably been a bit heavier this year, which has been fine, I suppose at times I've, um, I've dealt with it really well and at times I've dealt with it oh, not as well as I would have liked. You reflect on it and there's always a lot of things you could have done better, whether that was be cleaner, make more of just the opportunities you get. Just, uh, so oh, that's a good mark from Sloan. We've never relied on one guy throughout our midfield. Scotty Campriale has been amazing for our midfield group and we've seen guys stand up this year. I mean, Matty Crouch this year has been absolutely phenomenal. Hugh Greenwood's come into the side and just provided something that we haven't had. I mean, his pressure, his contested ball works, um, outstanding. When we've uh, played the type of footy we have and um, are sitting in a really good spot coming in with four games to go, I mean it's a pretty successful year so for me it's just all about team success and that's what we're having at the moment and that's the most important thing. You know it's going to be that finals like pressure. I know the one earlier on in the year it was three quarters of just absolute manic pressure from both teams and I think that's what you, you grow to expect and we've just got to make sure we, we bring that intensity that we have done for the majority of the year and if we bring that pressure and uh, we can win our fair share of the footy then hopefully we can get a, a good result. Plenty of depth in the 2008 draft, Rory wasn't taken until pick 44. Now, as we know, from the moment players are drafted, most of them have to fend for themselves, normally with the help of teammates. So, as Thomas Farms have demonstrated this season, they have to be handy in the kitchen. And today, Daniel Talia finds out how much DMAC knows about his food. Hi guys, here thanks to Thomas Farms Kitchen. It's been a few weeks since I've been here. I'm back. I've got uh, Dave McKay in today. So uh, I'm going to test him out. He braced himself as a lead cook. We're going to have an ingredient guess off and we'll see how much he knows about his food. Alright, we've got DMAC in today. I'm going to give him a look at this picture and then he's going to try and guess the five ingredients that are in it. Uh, I'm going to have to go with chicken, it looks like. Hang on, mate. <laughs> yeah. Chicken is one of them, yes. It looks like there was some brown rice there. Yep. Uh, broccolini. I saw. Yep, broccolini, that's three out of five. Thought I saw some parsley on top there. No. <laughs> no. No, no. Okay. One more, you've got three out of four. Some onion? No. <laughs> no, that's wrong. Three out of five of tasty. <laughs> <laughs> no good, so happy with that. <laughs> All right, guys, you only got three out of five. It proves you're not as good a cook as you think you are and you don't know much about food, no, so right thanks on. for joining me. Yeah. <laughs> Last week, James Podziadley showed us how the pace is hotting up in our Toyota Hilux four-wheel drive challenge. Well, word has it that Riley Knight also knows a thing or two about off-road driving. Let's find out as he negotiates a special course at Saunders Gorge near Adelaide.
Mate, it was good fun. I tell you what, uh, the vehicle can handle all terrains. It was um, Pozzi was sitting in the back and he uh, had the smoothest ride of his life, so it was good. Most good looking blokes like you uh, don't drive like this, though, do they? Yes, they do. No. This is a track of work, mate. <laughs> yeah, he um, was just making sure I beat VB, so I think we clocked in faster than him, so we job done. Where's the water? <laughs> I hadn't done a lot, no, I've done a little bit, but um, no, it's good fun. I, people should do more of it. It's um, a bit of a thrill. I thought I was actually cruising. I think um, VB set the, set the standard early, and um, obviously we're just trying to get better and go one better, so got him, which is good. Okay, we're going to let the tension build for the remainder of the season by not giving the times for the last few drives. Suffice to say, Riley was quick and the leaderboard is in for a shake-up. Stay with us, we're asking some celebs to tip the showdown winner and we'll check in on social media. now to take a look at a couple of social media highlights and it's worth noting that our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram sites are the fastest growing platforms in the AFL. The popularity of Twitter means it has the largest following in Australian club sport so make sure you get on board. It's fair to say last week's finish to the game was nail biting stuff. Let's relive Mitch McGovern's mark and goal after the siren to draw the game. Oh yes it is! And Crows ambassador Guy Sebastian is in pretty good physical condition at the moment. He looks even better working out in full kit. Now, how are your nerves going? We're just over half an hour from the first bounce. Time enough for some tips from a few familiar faces. The showdown, that's going to be a tough one. I need a little bit of help. Whisper into my ear, friend. Well, like so many showdowns in the past, I reckon this one's going to be pretty tight too. If you look at the defences of both sides, well, really tight and well disciplined. Midfield's both solid. So I think Adelaide maybe just have the edge in attack. Um, I'm thinking the Crows by, say, 14 points. Thank you very much. I'm going to pick the Crows by 30 points, which also coincides with the amount of points that I kicked in my debut game. Five goals, 30 points. We Flyers won. Kate and Harry here from House Rules. We're pretty excited. Showdown this week. I reckon the Crows by 32 points. What do you reckon, babe? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say a bigger margin. I'm going to say Crows by 50 points. I usually have a punt with a mate at the gym uh, on the showdown, and the last four we've coughed up, uh, so it'd be great if we could have a win this time. But as we saw last week, it could come down to the last kick, so... Uh, my prediction is uh, the power by six points. I think the Crows have got it in the bag against Port this weekend. I'm really looking forward to watching them. I think they'll win by about three goals. Is this far enough away, mate? Am I just out of the way enough for you to get the line on? <laughs> prediction? Uh, I reckon it's going to be a tight game, but the Crows by three goals. And just in case you didn't know who you were talking about, number one show in town, Andrew the Black Rhino, Juice Newton Jarman, Dale Lewis the Rush Hour, four to six weekdays on Triple M, 104.7. And now's the time when one of our fans is going to be a winner. As we look around for our face in the crowd, let's settle on you. If you recognise yourself, contact the club by 5pm next Wednesday with some photo ID and a merchandise pack will be yours. Well, Alana, the showdown record stands at 21 wins each and the Crows are aiming for a fifth consecutive victory. So, plenty to play for. Yeah, there sure is. Cannot wait. And don't forget, you can catch up with all the latest news and exclusive stories, like those we brought you today, by visiting the club website, afc.com.au. Thanks for your company and we look forward to joining you again next Sunday. Yes, and that'll be at our regular time slot of 11.30 on 7. We'll see you then. Bye for now.